Hello, welcome back, Pandora. We just signed off from that fantastic webinar and we did not get to answer all of the questions. So we're here to do a follow-up question and answer. And I appreciate you sticking around. I know you're very busy. It seems like many of the questions were focused around midwifery and nursing. And I'm gonna read two of the questions and one comment, and then I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna ask you to, you to, to um, give us your thoughts. Um, can you comment on the need of separating midwifery and nursing as individual self-standing professions? How do you give each equitable attention? And along with that was the comment, how can we cooperate and coordinate the midwifery practices with nurses? How do we bring, how do we, how can this bring together where midwifery education is started? And then we noticed in the poll that we did that the work of midwifery is not well understood, maybe by policy people and maybe by actually our communities. So what can we do to make sure midwives are understood to be midwives? Thank you so much, Erin. This is, I think, one of the hot button issues that is in our profession. So this is a multi-layered answer, the same way it's a multi-layered question. When we talk about the separation of nursing and midwifery, the first separation is in your heart, right? Your identity, your actually belief system, your embedding of the philosophy of midwifery as experts in normal women's reproductive health care. So once we have that from an individualized identity level, I think when we're going out into the broader world, you present as always a midwife all the time. So that when you're in these spaces, when you talk about equitable attention, it's bringing up that word midwife all the time. It's bringing your midwifery philosophy to every place that you are in so that the work is appreciated. I mentioned coalition building um, earlier. Midwifery has always been with us, right? But how are we getting our messaging out there? Are we friends with others like the media who can give the attention to it? Are we doing the little things that comes back policy, pushing, looking at the, 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 the agendas? When the newspaper comes out, what are they saying about midwives and midwifery? Are we pushing back each of us in our little ways, our little big ways, I think sometimes, snapping back on that letter to the editor, then seeing us again as separate? Separate professions, we go back to the ILO definitions, we are separate. Um, and equity isn't just given, equity is still something we're working on, earning the equity and showing up and being there. So I think this goes back to when we look at policies, asking ourselves, is it a national policy we're talking about changing for the advancement of midwifery? Is it an internal policy, like looking at our job descriptions, how you can advance? Now, what I'm also gonna point out is this separation of professions is also not really glossy and fashionable. A lot of this is deep digging, it's reading the boring stuff, regulation, scope of practice, really to understand what it's saying so that you know whether is that an internal policy. It's also when we look at midwives and political activism and changing this stuff, understanding those bigger issues are a long game. It can take 20 years. We just had that happen. 20 years to change a law. So yes, understanding that there may not also be the quick, quick advancement and that you have to stick to it. So there is a possibility. And then with the coalition building as well with some of the health professionals who I know in some countries in the Asian bloc are looking at advancing quicker, faster by looking at a, a block advancement and changing. So I hope that sheds some light on a very multi-tiered I question. I, it does. I, I hear you saying we need to push back as individuals and work as a group. And we and, and it's not just pushing, necessarily fighting against, because I also hear you saying we need to be in the media. We need to be seen online. We need to be, I know in my very small community, the midwives go to the farmer's market and set up a table just to educate the community as to what midwives are so that there'll be mid demand for midwives. And then we get the, the, the support as well. So it, it sounds like it has to come from a lot of levels and a lot of places. Um, and, and you keep saying push, push, and it is actually making me think of the push campaign, um, which is all about advocating for midwives, a midwife for every, for every woman, right? It all seems Absolutely. to come, come back together. And you touched on it, but I want to push a little bit more to you push. There it is again. I want to hear a little bit more about um, policies. So, you know, everybody wants 
ideally the government would just create a big policy and, and midwives could practice to their full scope, no matter what, no matter where they're working. Um, but I hear you saying that that could take 10 or 20 years or never, and that there are other ways to get things changed. So can you say a little bit more, uh, expand a little more about well, what, if, we're not, if we can't change our national policies, how can we make sure midwives are working to their full scope? What, what were you saying about policy there? Looking at some of the internal policies, I hear a lot of times people say, well, it's in the policy, right? So then I'll be in a setting and I'll say, well, show it to me. I see. And a lot of times people are not actually able to produce a policy that says X, Y, or Z, that is contravening full scope. Or then when you get it, you see it hasn't been reviewed, it hasn't been revised, or it says something different. Um, so I strongly say know what the policy in your hand is. Um, get on those policy review committees as well to look at what we're actually able to do or not able to do. Or sometimes some policies just haven't been done. We need to get in to bring it to the level or people don't realize that our scope has changed or what we can do. So it's, we have to then educate at the facility level, at the educate. Because again, look, politicians are people too, right? They have to get elected on the one hand, and then the same with our leaders don't, don't always know. So it's a constant evolution. And if we can think of what, you know, what some would consider our, our early midwifery sisters, you know, some would look at that, the money cultures have the story of the babies, you know, Herod and the babies and midwives always were doing something because they hid the babies, they talked about it. So we got to go back to our deep roots that midwives have always been with us and activism is an embedded part of midwifery for all time. And, and knowledge is power. If you read the policy, you have the knowledge and you can educate others. And that, the, how I'm gonna wrap this up is to remind people that the WHO has a seven step framework that we can use to change midwifery, to change leadership, to change and strengthen education. And ICM has a toolkit for advocacy, for ed education, regulation, association. JPIGO has tools. So maybe people also need to take some time digging around because the resources I'm hearing are there. And when we are educated, we will be more empowered to make these changes that we want. Absolutely, absolutely positively. We got to dig, we got to get back to the books. We got to do some deeper level reading, you know, as we talked about, well, what is the policy that we want to shift at what level as we go back to that step three, again, of, of our toolkit. Great. Pandora, thanks for taking the time. This is fantastic. And I look forward to the next six steps that we'll be talking about. And I hope you'll be coming back and sharing more with all of us. Thank, thank you all. You thank you for coming. Me. To be continued. Bye for now.